Let us talk a bit more about a, a recurring theme, sadly, in this country at the moment, and that is actually the problem with what can be described as the nanny state, because now the nanny state is about to offer up yet another idea, right? What they want you to do uh, is to basically earn shopping discounts for doing what they want you to do. People will be able to earn shopping discounts for walking more and getting their five-a-day fruit and vegetables as part of a new government health app. <laughs> Are you having a laugh? Are you serious? Let's talk to Jason Reed, political commentator in UK lead uh, Young Voices. Jason, I hope you've done some walking this morning and had a couple of apples because otherwise you're obviously an enemy of the state. I've done absolutely no walking and I had a very unhealthy breakfast Excellent. in protest at this appalling nanny statism. I mean, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? It goes without without saying how ludicrous this kind of sanctimonious finger wagging is. They're going to give us discounted theme park tickets if we buy more fruit and veg and then supposedly make ourselves less of a burden on the NHS. I'm very sceptical that there is an obesity crisis in this country at all, to be honest. But even if there was, it's, it's none of the government's business, no. frankly. Listen, if, if people want to sit around eating Kentucky Fried Chicken every day, that's entirely their affair, isn't it? You can't say to them, well, I wish you wouldn't do that because you're costing the NHS. It's the same argument that these doctors are using, saying, well, we don't want to see sick people. Exactly, yeah. And it's that NHS line I find particularly insulting. The implication is that if you're fat, you have less of a right to use the NHS than everyone else. Right. I pay into the NHS just like everyone else. So do you. So does everyone else. Right. If I decide to lock my arm off with an axe, that doesn't mean I have less of a right to use the NHS because yeah. I've caused a burden to it. We all pay for it. That's what it's there for. I mean, you might as well have some bloke with a clipboard standing outside the A&E going, you know, what have you done to yourself? OK, you sit over there for about two hours because the person who's coming in behind you uh, actually had an accident that was no fault of their own. You were drinking. Therefore, you can't be seen before him uh, who just fell under a bus by accident. Exactly. Yeah, you've got the public health lobby in Whitehall, which uh, thinks that it can centralise everyone's lifestyle decisions. They think they can make all our choices for us. Of course, human behaviour does not work that way. It's never worked that way. And so they see, um, they, they view people, I think, with disdain. They view normal people like you and me with disdain. Mm. They think that we need to have our decisions made for us because we can't help ourselves when we see a McDonald's advert. We just have to have that right. extra large Big Mac. And so we need them to the guiding hand of the state to help us out. It's just patronising, it's infantilising, and it's not necessary. It really isn't. And Jason, you and I have spoken about this before, that this kind of idea that the government seems to have become enthralled with, that they're in charge of the, the population of the country. They've forgotten that the population of the country are the people that are actually in charge of them, that we elect them, our money pays for them to have a job, our money pays for them to have any kind of budget to spend. And quite frankly, the idea that they think they're in charge is laughable. And the problem is you have this public health lobby behind the government, which is unelected and unaccountable. Mm. You've got organisations like Public Health England, which uh, thankfully is now, um, has now seen it met its demise. But right. it's been succeeded by something, I think, potentially even worse called the Office of Health Improvement and Disparities. Is that what they've gonna... replaced it with? Because I remember thinking years ago, well, not years ago, but all those months ago when Matt Hancock was still Secretary of State for Health. I'm going, and he kept mentioning public health England. I said, I thought you abolished that, but he still kept bringing it into the conversation. So now they've replaced it with some ridiculously named um, quasi sort of medical body then, have they? It's a whole new body. And yeah, there's also the Health Security Agency, which is going to deal with the important stuff like mm. pandemics. But then this new uh, Office for Health Improvement and Disparities is going to deal with the obesity crisis and it's going to help us stop smoking by raising taxes and introducing new regulations. And the problem, I think, is that this is all fueled by the World Health Organization, yes. which is all, also unelected and right. bureaucratic. Well, and they entirely have bogus. Meetings. They're entirely bogus and filled with sort of pre previously run um, UN diplomats, it seems to me. Yeah, exactly. They have these these meetings every year or every couple of years, like they've got one next month called COP9, which is to do with smoking and vaping. And it's just a bunch of people who agree with each other and they get in a room and they all agree with each other violently. And then they issue these diktats to governments around the world, which all the nanny status nod along with and dutifully implement. And there's no opportunity for us as, as the consumers, as the people who will be affected by that, to say, hang on a minute, yeah. I'd quite like to make that decision for myself. Right. Thank you very much. But they have this sort of shared narrative, don't they, where, you know, facts are stated as facts when they're actually not necessarily facts. For example, looking at this uh, story this morning in The Times, illnesses related to obesity cost the NHS £6 billion each year. Well, I'd like to see that done on paper, actually. I mean, exactly how the fat people cost us £6 billion a year. What are they spending it on? For all I know, they might be spending £5 billion, uh, on adverts telling people not to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. 
Yeah, it's absolutely ludicrous. Ob illnesses relating to obesity, that could be anything. That right. could be any heart disease, anything at all. Um, and it's not surprising at all that you have this kind of thing from the government, which has its agenda already, that it wants to uh, grow the nanny state, and then it will find facts, it will find science that, uh, that supports that agenda. And it makes a complete mockery of the idea that we're following the science or that we're uh, just going with where the facts tell us to go, because the government already knows what it wants to do. And of course, the tragedy with all this is that Boris Johnson used to be a libertarian once upon a time. Yeah. Um, but since then, I suppose it seems to be around the time he got COVID. And then afterwards, he said that he the reason he became so ill from COVID was because he was fat. And so he lost a lot of weight, which is great. Good mm. for him. But the part I don't understand is why that then the rest of, of his, us need help. Well, he seems to have lost part weight. of his brain as well while he lost all that weight, because he seems to have some of it, some pieces have been sucked out of his head. But what about this, right? Head Up Systems is apparently the company that they're doing this contract for the app for. They've given them two million pounds of our money to develop it so that it works on various devices. And they're basing it on a year long study in Canada, right, where nearly 40,000 people used um, uh, used an app in which they earned four cents a day every time they reached a personal step goal. I mean, I wonder if the human race is actually evolving backwards now where you've actually got people going, oh, that's good, isn't it? Four cents a day. Marvellous. So by the end of the week, I could have a dollar. If I work got, really, really hard. Yeah, you've got all these echo chambers going on. These kinds of studies are churned out by uh, scientists who have an agenda all the time. And there are thousands of them, if you look for them, every week, practically, where mm. they've said that they've discovered the cause of obesity or they've discovered the way to stop people smoking. And it's always leading to the same ends, which is more taxes, more regulation, more state interference in, in our lives because that's what the government and the public health lobby wants to hear yeah it really is quite remarkable isn't it and the trouble is is we keep encouraging them right i don't mean you and i but i mean the people who uh, kind of think that what the government is doing is good because they look at you very earnestly and say but but surely you want the health of the nation to be better yeah, well i don't really care about the health of the nation to be honest and i mean you know it's like saying that you don't want people to smoke cigarettes well make them illegal then because that's worked so well with the illegal drug business I was debating uh, earlier this week on Ian Collins' show, in fact, with Mary Kelly Foy, the Labour MP who wants to print smoking kills on the side of every cigarette. <laughs> um, and she, she, really? she, got, she got quite annoyed with me and she said, what do you have against helping people stop smoking? But that's not what that is. No. Telling people that they're doing it wrong and that you disagree with their lifestyle, mm. that's, that's not helping people do no. anything. Well, also, you only get to see the, the warning if you buy the cigarettes. So technically speaking, she's the one helping them to die. Well, exactly. That's a very good point. And of course, if you <laughs> if you get to the point where you're seeing the word smoking kills on the side of a cigarette, you've already seen the messages on the on the packet for the cigarette and you've already seen yeah. those pictures of diseased organs and everything. It's not going to stop you, is it? Well, and I don't think yeah. is that this never ends. I don't think the anybody happens. Anybody picks up a packet of cigarettes uh, knowing that they're good for them. I don't think anybody does that. Of course not. Everybody knows that cigarettes are unhealthy and that the in the minds of those in Whitehall, we need to be told because we're stupid and we need to be educated. Um, but what happens when this doesn't work, when they find out that putting smoking kills on cigarettes doesn't help people stop smoking? What's next? Do we have some kind of, you know, it, it's a flare is sent up when you light up a cigarette and you have to wear a bell around your neck to warn people that a smoker is coming. It's this kind of stigmatization of anyone who makes any kind of decision that the state doesn't like. Yeah, although, although the, health, the, uh, the health nutters have kind of done that, haven't they? Because, I mean, it's quite difficult to find anywhere you can actually smoke. I mean, I gave up smoking about four years ago, um, but I, when I was still a smoker, it was getting more and more difficult to find anywhere you could go to even have a cigarette outside. Exactly. And they accuse uh, people like you and I who talk about the growth of the nanny state of being alarmist and making a big thing of it. But it's this kind of creeping authoritarianism, little by little, a new regulation each month uh, that, you, that doesn't quite make the headlines mm. because it's not significant enough. And then before you know it, like you say, there's nowhere you can smoke. Mm. Um, and the, of course, the real solutions like vaping that helps people quit smoking, they don't even get a look in because these people are not actually interested in helping people. All they're interested in is inquiring more power is, by the way, using the precedent set by the pandemic to roll back our civil liberties. Uh, and just grow the state bigger and bigger. I know. It's absolutely shocking. Well, all we can do, Jace, is stand up against it and complain every single time they try and foist some more rubbish on us. Uh, and I'm sure that we will win in the end. Common sense must prevail, Jason. Uh, thank you indeed for joining us on the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Jason Reed from Young Voices there uh, talking about the madness of this ridiculous... I mean, who do they think they are, these people? I mean, who the hell does Sajid Javid think he is? He's got...